We are very happy that we have a, a Michael Hobler, and he will talk about a very important topic, which is the use of fresh homograms versus cryopreserved homograms in cardiac surgery. So it's very interesting to compare fresh versus cryopreserved. So Mike, thank you very much. So first of all, uh, thank you very much for the kind invitation to this very interesting conference. And after this very uh, ambitious um, use of cryopreservation, I want to go back a little bit to the present use of uh, cryopreserved tissue in cardiac surgery. So um, it's always worth looking back into the uh, history of uh, heart surgery and the use of human heart valves. Right now it's almost 65 years after the first uh, human heart valve has been implanted and it was uh, the famous Hufnagel uh, procedure where uh, he developed a cage in ball, ball in cage uh, heart valve which was implanted into the descending aorta. But of course this uh, device has some drawbacks uh, there was frequent embolization and uh, thrombosis of the ball in this cage and also it was a very noisy device so it, it was also called a ticking time bomb. This uh, brought the question how should an ideal heart valve substitute be uh, designed. It, it needs to have an optimal hemodynamics, so laminar flow across the valve, uh, good opening and closing uh, procedures. Ideally, there should be some growth potential. It should not be immunogenic, non-thrombogenic. It should cause no blood damage. No anticoagulants should be necessary. It should be easy to implant in an autotopic position. It should be cheap and off the shelf in all sizes available. Ideally, some regenerative potential should be resistant to endocarditis and uh, have no uh, noise in the movement. And one of the major advances, advances in uh, that period of time was uh, the implantation of the first human allograft valves. They have been implanted even before that date, 1962, in, also in the descending aorta, but it was by Donald Ross in London uh, who implanted the first aortic root homograft uh, in the autotopic position. And uh, astonishingly, it was a freeze-dried dried homograft, um, which he himself uh, developed. And uh, he, he mentioned that the anticoagulants have to be started on the fifth day after operation together with 100 milligrams of hydrocortisone uh, in the hope of limiting the body's inflammatory reaction. So they also, also uh, were waiting for some uh, immune response to the device. Why did they take uh, human allograft valves? Because they have optimal hemodynamic characteristics, minimal thromboembolic events, no need for anticoagulation, they were highly resistant to infection, and there was no noise of the valve movement. Right now, we use different types of homographs. Um, I divide in two groups, fresh and cryopreserved homographs. Uh, I will focus on uh, the autograft, which is the own pulmonary valve transplanted from the pulmonary side from the right ventricular outflow tract into the left ventricular outflow tract, also call, called ROS procedure. This type of um, homograft is uh, characterized by having no de decelerizing process, no cryopreservation process. And uh, since a few years there's a new valve uh, on the market um, which is a human valve donation as well as pulmonary homograft as and aortic homograft. And uh, these valves are processed in a decellularization process with no uh, cryopreservation. This is the concept and timeline of this uh, decellularization. You have the, after the donation of uh, the heart valve, um, 
There's about uh, four days time to start the processing. In the meantime, the, the hard valve is cooled down to four degrees. And um, the processing is a decellularization process which takes uh, about four weeks. Uh, and after that time, the, the valve is uh, free to implant, still no cryopreservation. Uh, just storing in uh, low temperature, four degrees, and uh, antibiotic solution. So uh, you have four to six months time to implant the valve, and uh, it takes, of course, a certain amount of time to get re the device recellularized. So uh, th these are um, the decellularized homographs. They were suspended in a solution of sodium desoxycholate and um, for about 24 hours, six wash cycles uh, and antibiotic treatment. And what they could prove is a complete maintenance of the basement membrane and the leaflets that uh, resemble an, that of a native valve. They could prove that 99% uh, of the donor DNA is removed during decellularization. Uh, so that the immune process, uh, immune system is reduced and um, all cells and cellular debris are removed to um, a degree of more than 99%. The extracellular matrix is left intact. Um, so that's uh, the, the characteristics of these uh, decellularized homographs. Uh, in the field of cryopreserved homographs, I will focus on the standard homograft compared to uh, the synograft, which is a product of the Cryolife company. Uh, standard homographs right now are non decellularized but cryopreserved, and the synograft is decellularized and cryopreserved. So the standard frozen cryopreservation is um, done with a solution of 10% uh, DMSO. Uh, it's stored in a 10% uh, fetal uh, calf serum and frozen control rate frozen at the rate of minus one degree Celsius per minute to below of minus 30 de 40 degrees and then stored in a, the vapor phase of light, uh, liquid nitrogen. So that's one of the standard uh, procedures for cryopreservation of this type of um, tissue. And if you uh, rethaw the, the tissue, you uh, just take it out of the freezer and uh, wa rapidly warm it in a uh, warm water ba bath. And you have to extensively rinse to remove the uh, anti-freezing solution. Um, the standard preservation techniques uh, right now causes serious damage to endothelial cells and to the extracellular matrix structures of the leaflets, and it does not prevent activation of immune systems. So all of these um, patients get an immune reaction. And so this, uh, the, these cryopreserved, cryopreserved valves uh, are predisposed to calcification and structural deterioration and dysfunction. So the Achilles heel, I already mentioned, disintegration of most collagenous structures, ECM and uh, other structures which predispose uh, calcium formation. So I come back to the uh, autograph, which is uh, the uh, ideal um, example for um, um, homograft. It's transplanted warm, uh, viable, without any um, deterioration of structure uh, from the right ventricular outflow tract, as you can see here. to the aortic position. You have to re-implant the coronary arteries and the pulmonary valve, which has been excised here, has to be replaced, replaced by a cryopreserved donor valve. The, this source procedure, unfortunately, uh, loses its attractiveness because 
uh, it's supposed to be a rather complex operation, and so the percentage of all uh, adult uh, aortic valve operations has fallen below 1%. Um, I mentioned it's a complex operation uh, and you, there are mainly two implantation techniques which mean you do either uh, a root replacement or a subcoronary implantation. Root replacement means you take all the pulmonary valve and re-implant it into the left ventricular outflow tract or you implant it into the old aortic root by a subcoronary implantation. That's how it looks like in the OR. You see here the re-implanted left coronary ostium. And this is uh, the subcoronary implantation where you see the left coronary, uh, the right coronary ostium and the suture line goes below the ostium. So the uh, results from this kind of autographs mean that um, uh, the the freedom from autograft reoperation on the on the right side is around 90% even after 20 years. In the ideal uh, operation technique of subcoronary implantation versus root replacement. And um, nevertheless, there is some mode of failure for the for these fresh homographs autografts. Uh, that means auto, uh, aortic regurgitation, and uh, this is part, partially depending on the implantation technique. So the development of aortic regurgitation is fastest in uh, the root replacement type of implantation and slowest in the uh, subcoronary um, mode of implantation. Uh, another mode of failure is um, the dilatation of uh, parts of the autograft, that means uh, the sinotubular junction, which is uh, important for the uh, function of an aortic root, and the sinus of Valsalva, they dilate, uh, and this causes um, aortic regurgitation and uh, may be a cause of reoperation. And one of the drawbacks of the rush operation is also that you have to um, implant a cryopreserved homograft into uh, the right ventricular outflow tract. And these are the results of different types of uh, uh, prosthesis for the right ventricular outflow tract. For fresh homographs, I mentioned uh, there's a rather new valve on the market, uh, also called the Hannover valve, because they, uh, they were processed from the European Homograph Bank and processed uh, in Hannover. So uh, this is, to my knowledge, the only uh, fresh homograft which is only decelerized. And um, in, the, in a European study, they compared uh, 93 decelerized Arise uh, uh, SPOA valves versus cryopreserved pulmonary homographs and uh, the alternative um, bovine chocolate vein conduit, which is uh, also known as the Contegra valve. These were the different uh, uh, indications for implantation, and you can see the different results and the superior outcome for the for this uh, SPOA valve. In, um, with respect to freedom from explantation and freedom from explantation and re-intervention compared to the cryopreserved pulmonary homographs and the uh, xenograft bovine chocolate vein conduits. And the same results um, with respect to freedom from death, freedom from endocarditis, freedom from explantation, and freedom from the development of different grades of um, gradients and regurgitation. There's also the question um, whether these uh, valves can grow and um, the uh, time period of um, surveillance about eight years. So what, what this uh, graphic means is that these transplanted valves all stay within uh, the normal range of growth, 
even after eight years, they are in, in the range of uh, set value of zero, which means they are they have the same um, um, size with respect to the body surface area. This is a picture of this uh, decelerized uh, um, homograft prior to implantation, and we participate in this uh, European study. Uh, with um, also very good um, early results. Now I move to the um, cryopreserved uh, homographs, and um, here I want to compare the sonograft um, homograft versus standard homografts. And um, the sonograft, as you remember, is um, decelerized human uh, heart valve compared to the other standard homographs. And this is a, m a most recent study uh, from 2017 where they could show that the decelerized homograft is uh, has superior results to the standard homographs. And this uh, also uh, with respect to um, freedom from pulmonary regurgitation and the de development of pulmonary stenosis. Uh, that means uh, stenosis of the transplanted valve. But um, you always have to be curious about the results. So a previous study uh, mentioned that the standard allograft is superior to the synograft with statistically significant uh, values, but um, it always, you always have to compare patient cohorts, different graft sizes, and single center versus uh, multi center uh, design of the study. So, to conclude, uh, the ROS procedure is still a valuable technique in pediatric cardiac surgery due to very good long term results and the lack of alternatives. Autograft failure partially is attributable to implant techniques. The decelerized fresh homographs like ESPOR and ORISE have excellent and very promising initial results. Their long time performance, especially after eight to 10 years, has to be evaluated. Um, and we participate in the evalu evalu evaluation of this uh, valve. Current standard cryopreservation destroys homograph structural integrity. Uh, which is responsible for inferior clinical results. And the lack of homograft necessitates the development of new techniques for cryopreservation and artificial scaffolds and their uh, potential reseeding. Thank you very much.